when they, in John chapter 6, the Bible said, when they heard Jesus, they said, this is a hard thing. The Bible said, many of his disciples left him. Are you hearing me? When they began to receive the teaching of Jesus, and they said, Master, how, how are we going to do this? And Jesus said, that, except you live, you cannot live. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have no life. They said, <laughs> they said keep it. The Bible said, the only place you see 666, which is the number of man. John chapter 6, verse 66. Many of his disciples then left. There was only the 12 that was left. And Jesus didn't say, Praise God, are you uh, remaining or not? Jesus said, to them, What about you? Are you not leaving? Where are you waiting for? Are you not going? We make, you know, we make too much noise about having members. But Jesus will come and sometimes satisfied to have a few. A few that will live for Christ and to have multitude that will live lawless. And he said to them, What about you? Are you not living? And Peter answered, Where shall we go? We have come to know that you have the word of life. Where do we go to? And until you come to a point where you know that the word of God is your life, you will continue to live and jump from place to place. The only thing that meant the twelve not to live is because they have understood that the word of life is with Jesus. And so they couldn't go anywhere. And until you discover that you continue to be lawless, you continue to run about, roam about, and all that, tossed about like. Uh, Paul said to the Ephesians, we have an opportunity in this teaching, in this class, for your life to be upgraded. You have an opportunity for God to give you an assignment and a ministry. And it starts with this local church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It starts with this local church. The way you are taking of gospel, the way you behave now. Maybe before, when people are there in church, you can shout and yell now. now now, you are conscious of what you carry. I am a carrier of divinity. I am a messenger. I am a witness. I don't talk the way I used to talk. I don't share the way I used to talk. You know what? You know, uh, James said to us that if any man offends not in words, the same is perfect. Our word, our word is the express road, the express road to sin. It's not just what we say. It is how we say it. It's not just what we say. Any word that offends somebody, any word that you speak that offends somebody, it makes you an offender. Praise the Lord. You should be concerned about how people will hear what you are saying. You should be concerned. Why? It is in your interest because it can determine you, the, the action they will take. And so character development. They are talking about converting you. Not me, but the Holy Ghost compassion in you. We are talking about transforming you. Taking the word out of you and putting the word in you. That's what we are talking about. Take out the word, put in the word. We are talking about conformity to Christ. Not conformity to the world. Praise the Lord. All these things, all these things, are the necessary ingredients for that transformation. Amen. Amen. They are the necessary ingredients for your transformation. But this is something we have not taken serious. We have not taken serious. And meanwhile, we need to take it serious. We ought to take them serious. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Jesus said, Without me, you can do nothing. In John chapter 15. That was not the life I used to in the world. In the world, we have lived by might and by power. And then in the new creation, over and over and over and over, Jesus tried to communicate to us that by strength shall no man prevail. Without me, you can do nothing. And yet, how many of us believe that? How many of us exercise that? How many of us work in that? Amen. Of myself, I can do nothing. But I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. How many of us talk and walk that way? The moment that hits you in your spirit, the moment that hits you in your spirit, whatever assignment is given to you, your first answer is not to say no. Your first answer is not to squeeze your face, your countenance, because you may not say no, but your countenance has already said no. 
I am a living example and a living proof of that. I serve to the degree whereby whatever assignment has given to me, whether I know it or not, I will say, yes, man, yes, sir, and I will take it on. And you know what? To the glory of God, in 12 years of service, in the most tedious conditions, sometimes really, really stretched out assignment, God gave me the grace to succeed at every time. You know why? Because I was under authority. And secondly, I understood that the word of God makes ways for anybody, and opposed for anybody. Sometimes I'm amazed, young people, some of you that are here, the limitations you set upon yourself. When something is asked you, I don't know it. You don't know it, cup of grace from you. In the new creation, listen, I said to you, grace begins where your ability ends. In the new creation, there's nothing like I can do it. That's, you see, you see, this is this is what made God to pick up David. David was watching the father's flock. A lion came and took him, pursued the lion, killed the lion. Where did he get that knowledge from? Where did he get that expertise from? Another bear came and took him, pursued the bear, and killed the bear. What would you do if you were David? You will run. Don't you understand? God will not use people that are non-courageous. God will not use people that are bold. God will not use them. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, for your pastor to say that, yes, this is truly my son, I know he doesn't fear anything, any assignment. That is a lot of credit. A lot of credit. A lot of credit. You look at ways, you look at ways to honor your father. If you honor your father on earth, you will honor your father in heaven. That's, that's the truth. When we talk about honoring our father, people's mind automatically goes to their biological parents. No, sir, that's not what God's talking about. Your first honor goes to your pastor or whoever is your spiritual father because that is so, the spirit controls the flesh. When you are in trouble and you say, Pastor, speak the word to work. That presupposes that you have placed yourself under the anointing and his grace. Amen. Amen. That presupposes that you are under. You are under. You care. You are your pastor's delight. And so that grace is continuously poured out on you, poured out on you, poured out on you. Even when your name comes up, even when he's praying, he mentions your name positively before the Lord. There is nothing like having somebody that mentions your name before the Lord. There is nothing like that, believe me. Believe me. Praise the Lord. You don't know how much trouble it saves. Oh, you don't know how much grace brings upon your life. And yet, in our worldly life, we don't know that. Our parents becomes our everything. Amen. 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 But when you get born again, God begins to change you. He says, listen, your spiritual family uh, comes first before your biological family. This is the change that takes place. Amen. Amen. Because at the end of the day, if anything happens to your physical parents, your pastor, your father in the Lord can command a change. But if anything happens to you spiritually, your parents cannot command a change. Simple. They just say, oh, call doctor. Oh, call doctor. Oh, call doctor. And what can doctor do? Shout out to you. The need for this class is for you to become a need meter in the body of Christ. When you have a character and then the anointing comes upon you, you can do much more, much more, much more. Praise the Lord. I know a worshiper with a lousy character. Heavily anointed, heavily gifted, but without a character. I know a guy that in Ghana, <clears throat> he was available to the highest bidder. He was leading a choir in Ghana, and he had a problem there. And instead of him to go through the discipline, somebody else offered him more money. And he left the church, and then come, came to Nigeria, and began to lead the choir in that church. And then the same problem he had in Ghana, 
you repeated it in the church in Lagos. The same thing we did. And when he did it, while the person was trying to deal with issue and all that, the church in Canada called him and offered him about money. He left the church in, in, in Lagos and went back to the one in Ghana, where he came from before. You know what? He died. That young guy, heavily gifted, heavily anointed, but characterless. And I said to you, Lord, lawlessness shortcuts your life. Lawlessness shortcuts your life. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide, shall abide, shall abide. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall what? Abide. And when we abide under the shadow of the moment, we are untouchable. Praise God. Say we are untouchable. And that is the place where we belong. And what keeps us there is the word of God. What did God say to Joshua? He says, be courageous. He said, be courageous. Stay on the word. Meditate upon the word. Day and night. He said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. He didn't say build an army. He didn't say get the right people. He didn't say fast. He says, meditate upon the word. He says, stay with the word. He says, day and night. Day and night. Praise the Lord. We can learn what is important with God. We can learn what is important for divine protection. We can learn from what is important. The world is corrupting the church. Instead of the church transforming the world. Instead of the church transforming the world. You see people living... They live in the world and live in the world. They choose here and there, whichever one that, you know, that suits them best. They, they, they all decide that. It depends on where it favors them. But it's not supposed to be like that. We're supposed, the narrow way is straight. The narrow way is one way. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said it to us from the beginning. He said it's a difficult way. It's a hard way. Praise the Lord. God said, talk about me when you sit together with your children. God said, tell your children what I have done for you. The Bible said in Psalm 127 that children are a gift from the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the children are the reward of the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. How many times do you sit your children down together and tell them, do you know you are a gift from the Lord? How many times have you spoken to your children over and over and over again that you are a gift and a reward from the Lord? But you will tell them, I carry you nine months only. Are you hearing me? You will tell them, I carried you and you sucked my breast for how many months? Six months. You talk. You only carry them nine months. What about the one that will carry them for the rest of their lives? Have you introduced your children to him? Have you told your children that they didn't come from you, but they have come from God? Shout hallelujah. Not because of auto, because of restrictions. You can't live the way you used to live. If any man be in Christ, when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Now, how do you change somebody? You can't change somebody while the person is fighting. Have you noticed that when you go to hospital and they need to do operation, major operation, to do something you want they to do. They put you to sleep. Is that right? Yes, sir. When God wanted to form Eve, what did he do? He put Adam to sleep. And so you can't be fighting and see change. And that's why he says in James chapter 4, he says, submit yourself. Sleep off. Ignore the things around you. Ignore the things you see. Amen. Amen. There's something they used to put people to sleep. What is it called? Eh? Anastasia? They do it, you sleep off. You won't feel anything. You won't know anything. When you wake up, you just feel the pain. 
That's what we're supposed to be in Christ when we are new creation. We're supposed to yield and submit ourselves. Amen. Amen. You don't feel it until when, <laughs> when you wake up. And by the way, in Christianity, you don't wake up because you are dead already to the world. So in the new life, you are living in Christ. You don't feel the pain because it is your normal way of living now. And John chapter 2, whatever he tells you to do, even if it sounds foolish, do it. Even if it sounds meaningless, do it. Even if it sounds ridiculous, do it. And my father in the Lord said that if you don't obey ridiculous instruction, we will not see the miraculous. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Wow, I love that. If you don't obey the ridiculous, you will not see the miraculous. If somebody calls you and says, I'm going to airport, say which one? Local, go to airport. He said, uh, to do what? Go. But what am I supposed to go? He said, that's why I don't understand pastors. I don't understand these people that call themselves men of God. Somebody said I should go to a port. I'm not a fool now. And we are praying that you are just a fool. <laughs> we are praying that you are just a fool, that you just go to a port. Are you hearing me? Yes. And as you step out, you are murmuring, you are complaining, and you have canceled the assignment that is ahead of you. And then when you got there, nothing happened. So you see, oh, that's it. All these pastors, they don't understand. They yeah, don't know the what kind of world they live in. Sometimes they have to be a little bit uh, normal. You know what? In your disobedience, you made null and void. Of the spiritual ascendant. Praise the Lord. Amen. I mean, I'm going to ask assignment that shoot me, but amazingly went through. You know why? I didn't doubt. I didn't question. I just did it. I just did it. I just followed it. You must know that when you come to Christ, it's a narrow way. Amen. We must know that there's a need for compassion. That's what Peter said. We must know that the compassion brings refreshing of our spirit and our soul. We must know. And until we are converted, we don't have the refreshing. And that's why many people are struggling with their life 10 years after they're born again. Because all they can do is just pray in tongues. And that's what they thought that if you're praying in tongues, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, you can pray in tongues without being filled with the Holy Spirit. You can do ba 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 ba, but that's not tongues. That's not tongues. There is no gift of the Spirit that can be abused like praying in tongues. Because whatever people hear, they will believe you are speaking spiritual language. I remember one guy. Those days in, in Straubing, in Munich, in, in Germany, sorry. Uh, and then um, we were in service. And uh, I said, everybody should pray in tongues. And then, then the, the washroom was somehow closed inside the church hall, but, but separated. And then he was, he, he was praying in tongues and went into the toilet. Rabba, 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 rabba. While he was there, I already said, praise the Lord. Everybody stopped. And we're hearing rabba, 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 rabba from the toilet. <laughs> Where is that coming from? The wife have to rush and go and knock on the toilet door. <laughs> Please stop. Amen. I remember one time also, we were praying in tongue, and then Reverend Ray was going around. I had somebody say, yeah, bye, bye, yeah, 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 yeah. He hit him by, bro, change your tongue. Praise the Lord. Send you, buy my car, lost my car, find my car, buy me rice, buy me rice, I'm hungry, buy me rice. That's not tongue. But you can speak it so far, people will think it's tongue. Praise the Lord. I would like people to fake love. Try and love somebody. Amen. And love indeed. Love what? Not in tongues, not in words. Love what? Indeed and in truth. Love like that. Praise the Lord. Listen. 
Make up your mind to be converted. Make up your mind to be different from what you used to be. That is what new creation is all about. A new you. All things have passed away. Your old you has gone. It's dead. Amen. Narrow is the way. Difficult. Difficult. Register that. Why is it difficult? Because you have to endure. Paul said to Timothy, as a good soldier of Christ, endure hardness. And we are not taught that. When you have to forgive them, when they take advantage of you, when they use you, when they abuse you, that is the hardness of the gospel. Christ, that was what Christ suffered for us, to make salvation possible. If Jesus had fought back, there would have been no salvation. And maybe if you will stop fighting back, somebody will give their life to Christ because of you. If you will. Shout hallelujah. If you will stop fighting back, somebody will give their life to Christ because of you. Oh, I wish you would stop. You know who I am? Who are you? Saul became poor. He became desirable to nothing. I want you to know that if you don't allow the word of God work in you, then it will produce nothing in you. In Titus chapter 2, <coughs> in Titus chapter 2, We are reading from verse 1. Amen. <clears throat> Paul said to Titus, who is also his son in ministry, or in Christ, he says, you, however, you, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. He says, teach the older men to be temperament, worthy of respect, self-control, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. He says, teach the older men, teach the older men, those that are matured, teach them to be temperament or temperate, worthy of respect, self-control, and such in faith, in love, and endurance. He says, verse 3, Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Listen now. This thing is opposite of what the older men used to live in the society. It's opposite, it, isn't it? So what Paul is saying to Timothy, tell them the way in the world is not the way in Christ. And Titus is a young pastor, young preacher, like Timothy. And now they are in a position to teach older men. Whereas culture says that older men are wiser than young men. And now Paul is saying, teach these older men, even though they have come to Christ, but they are but babies. Amen? In um, Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. And if you look at it, this is close to what Paul wrote to Timothy. He says in verse 1, Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. Praise the Lord. To be ready to do what? Whatever. I don't know what it says in your own translation. Sorry? Every good is the same. Amen? To be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, meaning that you don't have the capacity to say no to instruction in Christ. Instructions, especially if it is something that will profit the body of Christ. You don't have the capacity to say no anymore. You are yielded to Christ. 
when you say you give your life to Christ, it means that Christ controls what you do. That's what it means, isn't it? It means that when you say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life, well, you can't go against your Lord anyway. Amen? The people that work under the president, they can't go against the president. You get fired. Amen? In UK, the new finance minister just got fired. An African British man. You know, what did he do? He, he created a mess for the prime minister with his policy. But it wasn't his policy. It was the prime minister's policy. But he has to go. Yes, he has to go. Just today, he, he's on the job for 30-something days. So you create embarrassment for the government, you are sacrificed. Bah, that's it. And he's still in the party. He can't leave the party. That will even be worse. Are you hearing? It wasn't his policy. It wasn't his policy. It was the prime minister's policy. The prime minister gave him the assignment. And when it did not work, he has to go. Simple. And that is in politics. If that is to happen to you in church, you will leave the church. And the world, this is why Jesus said that in this, the children of the world are more wiser than the children of light. Praise the Lord. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name.